Okay, today I want to respond to a creationist video aimed at young people, and that goes out of its way to denounce and debunk evolution. More and more of these are cropping up, most of them out of America, and it's worrying to see the increasing attacks on evidence-based science from evangelical Christians and other faiths who find themselves threatened by evolution. The upload is called Debunk Evolution Classroom Promo Video and comes courtesy of Genesis Apologetics, a YouTube channel that hides the number of subscribers it has and has comments disabled. Make of that what you will. The website responsible for these videos is genesisapologetics.com, where you can find a whole slew of videos in their Debunk Evolution series. So, let's have a look. We start off with a typical California high school. I know that the last two weeks that we've been talking about evolution has been really tough for some of you. I understand that some of you are raised in families that don't believe in evolution for religious reasons. But in my class, I try to teach you to think for yourself. Okay, a good start. Any school that encourages thinking for oneself should be applauded. But wait just one minute. The science teacher is actually the bad guy of the piece. The identical atheist complete with goatee beard and hard-boiled demeanor Listen to everything he says. He speaks sense. Are there any questions? No questions? Kayla, you've been unusually quiet. You always have challenges for me. Uh, no, that's okay. But, but, but I know there's a God. I felt him. You can't explain my entire faith away with just a couple of chapters from the science book. At what point did this teacher try to take away anybody's faith? Did I miss something? Or is this Christian kid just jumping on the persecution wagon? And anyway, if there are so many kids in this class whose parents object to what the science teacher is teaching, why aren't they being homeschooled? Mark, feelings can be compelling, but also very misleading. Now, I don't mind if you have faith in your God, but science doesn't require faith. It requires evidence. Again, the teacher is not saying anything controversial or adversarial. He has said that he is not out to destroy anybody's faith, which, I might add, is supposed to be left outside the classroom. There's this little thing called the separation of church and state. And yes, evidence is what is needed for any claim, be it scientific or the supernatural, especially the supernatural. Anyone else? seems to me that that's just what's missing from the whole idea of evolution. What's missing? Evidence. Evidence is missing. It just seems that it takes much more faith to believe in evolution than to believe in a designer. Creationists love to argue on a level playing field, turning science into just another religion that requires faith. Except science doesn't rely on faith. It uses the scientific method to gather evidence, test, and peer review a new finding so that it stands up to scrutiny. So, do you think this Christian girl has applied that same process to her invisible God? Do you have any examples? Well, how about when the textbook talks about the law of biogenesis, how life cannot come from non-life, but then in the next chapter it talks about how all life sprung from non-living material. What she means is the hypothesis of biogenesis, which states that life can only come from pre-existing life, originally postulated by Louis Pasteur, the 19th century biochemist. However, biologist Thomas Henry Huxley, a contemporary of Pasteur as well as Darwin, coined the term abiogenesis as a description of life arising from non-living organic compounds, as was successfully created in the 1952 Miller-Urey experiment. And then it talks about mutation and natural selection and how it can change one animal into another. That is a fundamental misunderstanding of evolution. Mutations are changes within DNA that can either harm or help an organism to thrive, or they can have no effect whatsoever. Natural selection is what happens when those organisms are successful or unsuccessful in surviving and passing on their genes, as when darker colored mice blend in better with a dark environment, thereby eluding predators. As these successful changes are passed on, eventually a new species is likely to arise. But mutation only loses information, and natural selection can only choose from what's there. Wrong! Biologists frequently find examples of how mutations have not only increased information, but benefited certain animals. For example, 
The single-chambered hearts of sea squirts can be transformed into a working two-chambered heart through a simple change in gene activity. Up until a few thousand years ago, human beings could not properly digest milk. Mutations within certain human groups allowed for digestion of milk to occur, and now this is much less of a problem. These and many more examples show how mutations can and will increase information, and in many cases, beneficial traits. As for natural selection, it doesn't just choose from what's there, it relies heavily on factors such as variation. The more offspring an organism has, the more genetic variation occurs, such as different colorings, which may give future generations an advantage. The traits that help the creature to survive are the traits that continue. So how does a simple living organism turn into something like us? The fossil record shows that simple creatures evolve into more complex ones. How do we know this? The further back in time we dig, the simpler the organisms become. Over millions of years, the simplest of organisms gave rise to more complex ones. But if you believe the Earth is only 6,000 years old, then I don't blame you for being confused by you this. You think about like the complexity of the human eye and how we could never design something like that. Well, human beings have designed incredibly complex artificial lenses, such as what was used in the Hubble telescope. But our eyes are the result of millions of years of evolution, beginning with creatures that had light-sensitive cells that over time allowed for more and more light and the focusing of that light. Even now, our eye isn't perfect. Our retina receives images upside down, only to be corrected by our brain. Why would a god create our eyes like that? Because he can? Or how, how the human body can heal itself. Actually, Darwinian mechanisms can explain processes such as blood clotting, harkening back to the earliest animals in our history over 600 million years ago in the Precambrian time. Animals which had rudimentary white blood cell systems that patched up injuries. And if you're saying that a god could only have created the healing factor, then why would he allow injuries as well? If we suffer because it's a fallen, sinful world, as Christians believe, then why give our blood the ability to clot and heal itself? I just don't understand how some half-pound insect-eating shrew that somehow dodged whatever killed the dinosaurs could evolve from ape to ape-man over millions of unseen years and then poof! You Wait. Poof? You mean like how your god just poofed Adam into existence? At least the evolutionary explanation takes into account a vast span of time for changes to occur. Your explanation is, well, magic. <laughs> creatures running around everywhere, right? Uh, yes, you're right. Every living creature is an intermediate creature, the current stage of what we once were and what we may become. Everything is transitional. And all of the in-between fossils could fit in the back of my Prius. In fact, there are thousands of fossils that have been found and archived. Even if you're just talking about human hominid fossils, dating to as far back as six million years ago. Not to mention hundreds, if not thousands, of transitional fossils that have been found so far by researchers, including short-necked giraffes, early whales, early elephants, feathered dinosaurs, and tetrapods, animals halfway between fish and amphibians. The exact count has yet to be determined, as some animal lineages are still evolving. And you know what else? I just don't understand how all of this started. I mean, you say that science doesn't rely on faith, but evolution requires faith. Faith that everything just burst out of nothing. Um, isn't that what you claim your god did? That gas clouds collapsed and turned into stars, and all this stuff just collided around the sun to create planets, including Earth, that is just the right distance away from the sun to sustain life. Oh, here we go, the so-called fine-tuning argument, which says the Earth and even the entire universe is obviously designed for human life to live in it. No, we evolved to live on this planet, a planet that, let's face it, can be pretty harsh. We have tornadoes, volcanoes, and earthquakes, but we found a way to survive. What about the creatures that live amid the scalding water of submerged volcanic vents, the extremophiles? They found a way to adapt so that they can live in an environment that should be killing them. Think about that. 
It requires faith to believe that living organisms created male and female, crawled out of the water, and then magically became land-dwelling animals, which then became humans. Wait, wait, wait. You're accusing science of magic? All without intelligence or design? I just think it takes a lot more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe that all the design, marvelous design around us points to a designer. No, Kayla, your claim requires faith. You even call Christianity your faith. And now I'm just rambling. So does anyone else have a question? Stand strong in your faith. Visit debunkevolution.com. The idea of being related to animals, especially dirty, filthy apes, is abhorrent to Christians. Their Bible tells them that they are a glorified creation of the one and only Creator, and that they have a grand purpose. This is much, much more preferable to the scientific explanation. You know, the one supported by facts. Well, here is perhaps the grandest truth of all. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean that it deserves to be defiled and ridiculed. You can deny the science of evolution all you like, but I bet not one of you creationists completely denigrates science. Your computer, or the phone that you're staring at right now, is a product of, guess what? Science. You'd be pretty lost without science. Especially if you suddenly found yourself with an inflamed appendix. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to Talk Beliefs.